Network Dojo. Okay, last video in this section, we're going to talk about Mobility Express. So this is just gets bundled into the overall sort of AeroS controller section, but they are kind of their own entity, even though it is AeroS uh, at heart here. So let's kind of talk about the basics of Mobility Express. Mainly it's the architecture. That's the, the big part of it. And then the rest of it is kind of similar to what we've already talked about. So sort of the X800 series of APs, you know, 1800s, 2800s, 3800 series APs, um, well, in our lab and in the real world, uh, are Mobility Express capable APs, uh, which means that they, be, they can become something called a master AP, assuming they have the proper operating system installed. These APs could either have Mobility Express operating systems or just sort of classic AP operating systems installed, just depending on what type of an AP you want it to be. So, assuming they have Mobility Express operating system installed, they can become something called a master AP. What's a master AP? A master AP is an AP that runs a virtual wireless LAN controller within it. So, in, in, inside the little AP box, it's an AP plus a wireless LAN controller embedded inside of it. And so when this AP boots up with the proper operating system installed, it first boots up the AP operating system. That's the first thing that happens. And so you could call it the, the AP persona uh, versus the controller persona, the AP operating system versus the controller operating system. So I'll, I might use it a little bit interchangeably here, but it boots up the AP operating system. So you, you see it boot up like most any other AP would boot up. So it boots up as an AP, pulls an IP address, as its AP. But then what it's going to do is it's going to look to see, should I become the master AP? If it thinks that it should become the master AP, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit, it will then start the boot up of the controller operating system on top of it. But this is a separate entity. And so that AP is still running as an AP. But also within it, there's also a controller running. So, you know, think of it like an ESX server where it's got uh, a couple different operating systems running within the same physical hardware sort of a deal. Um, or maybe better, you know, like a laptop running a virtual machine within it. And so I got my Mac OS X running, but then I have a virtual machine running within it uh, that's running Windows. So again, it's, it's the same hardware, but there's basically two personas uh, operating at the same time within the, first, so th within the same sort of hardware, the AP as well as now the controller boots up. And so all of a sudden you see the controller boot up and see you see the lines of the controller and very similar to you know watching a 5508 boot up. And then now the controller is also running on the same piece of hardware. But again, they're separate things. And so the AP persona will join up to the controller persona. So essentially it creates a little mini cap web tunnel within itself from the AP to the controller. So they are two separate entities. They operate as a controller and an AP and they interact as a controller and an AP would interact with each other. And then also other APs can join up to this controller persona within the AP hardware. And so that would be something called a subordinate AP. A subordinate AP is just another AP that happens to join up to the master AP as an AP or as a controller. And so we create this controller-based network. It's just we don't have a standalone controller anymore. The controller just runs within one of the APs and we call that AP the master AP. Hopefully it makes sense so far. So again, the AP, the master AP is an AP that also runs a virtual wireless LAN controller inside it. They each operate separately. They have their own configs and they operate independently, you know, separate memory spaces and all that good stuff. The controller management interface, you know, the controller is a, is a controller. It runs AeroS. And so it has many of the same, you know, interfaces that we would normally see on a 5508. Obviously, there's no separate physical ports on it, so we don't have service ports. Uh, we don't have redundancy ports or things like that. But, you know, it has, you know, management interface, has a virtual, virtual interface. And so that management interface... One of the requirements there is it will be on the same subnet as the AP. It's always untagged. So whatever, you know, the AP port is, 
uh, the untagged interface on the AP, where the AP pulls its IP address. That's where the management interface needs to use its IP address as well, but management interfaces are always statically IP'd, right? It's just on an untagged um, VLAN. Uh, subordinate APs are going to discover and join the master AP just like any other controller. So it's got to use, you know, broadcast, DHP option 43, DNS, primary, secondary, tertiary. It needs to discover the controller, sends the discovery requests. The controller receives it on its management interface, which is also the AP manager interface. We don't have standalone AP manager interfaces. Um, it responds with the discovery response. It joins. The join happens like any other controller. And boom, we have a subordinate AP joined up. That subordinate AP could be on the same subnet, could be on a completely different subnet from the master AP. The subordinate AP does not need to be on the same subnet as the master AP. They just need to be able to talk to each other over layer three. Now one limitation or requirement, there can be only one master AP on a given VLAN. It is very common that all of the APs in the deployment are on the same VLAN. Because we're not talking massive deployments here. This isn't a campus-wide solution. It's a smaller building solution. I don't know if it, I can't remember how many APs it maxes out of. It's like 25 or something like that. But it's not massive. So it is, it is very common that the APs themselves are on the same VLAN as, as each other. But um, we can only have one master AP active on a given VLAN. This is one of the, the limitations there. Now, what about redundancy? Because APs can go down, right? Let's, uh, we do have the ability to have redundancy of the master AP because we can have multiple Mobility Express capable APs on the same VLAN. And if that's the case, absolutely, they can kind of back each other up and that's built into the overall process of Mobility Express. And so here's, uh, the way that it does that is the APs that are Mobility Express capable use VRRP, which is a first hop redundancy protocol, if, you've ever, if you're ever familiar with that, to detect the failure of the master AP and elect a new one. It uses VRRP group one, which means if you actually use VRRP on your switches, uh, don't use group one, otherwise it's gonna conflict with your Mobility Express deployment there. Uh, so the master AP, when we need to figure out, okay, we have multiple Mobility Express capable APs, which one should be the master AP? Well, this, can hap this only happens during an election. Otherwise, when, when there is a master AP currently operating, that stays the master AP, even if other APs come up and might be more preferred. Once there's a master AP, it stays the master AP because flipping from one master AP to another is absolutely impacting. Tunnels drop, CapWAP tunnels drop, and have to reform for this to happen. So as, if there's a current master AP, that just stays that way. But when do we have an election? Well, if let's say that we have two Mobility Express capable APs. They boot up at the same time. There's no active master AP. They both get to the point where they're looking to see should I be the master AP? Is there already another master AP out there? That's when an election can happen. They would see each other and say, oh, okay, yep, there's someone else that's capable. Which one of us should be the master AP? There's an election. Or let's say you have three Mobility Express capable APs. One of them's currently the master. Two are waiting in the wings. The master goes down. These two det detect that. Okay, now they can have an election between each other. So that's another place where an election would actually happen. So. In the event of an election, who's the winner? Well, there's three tiers. Number one, you can define one AP as the desired master, but only one. And so that AP would win an election over the, any other APs. Number two, the AP that has the least client load, that would be in that three AP sort of scenario. They're all servicing clients because they're not only, you know, they happen to be subordinate APs at the moment of the master AP, but they're, they're backups. And so when the master AP goes down, these could potentially have clients on them. Whoever has the least client load, that becomes the master AP. And the, the tiebreaker, the AP with the lowest MAC address. That would be like, you know, two APs booting at the same time. They don't have any clients on them yet because they're not joined to a controller. Hence, the lowest MAC AP would win if it's one of them's not a user-defined master. So those are the ways that we would uh, choose who wins an election. But again, once there's a, an established master AP, any APs booting up defer to that master AP. They don't become a master AP unless we force a failover. Okay, 
uh, controller. So once we have these Mobility Express capable APs up and running, and uh, so we have a master, and let's say we have another Mobility Express capable AP that joins up to the master as a subordinate, we know that that's okay. That's a backup master essentially. And the master AP syncs its controller config over to these other Mobility Express subordinate APs. So that if the master AP goes away, the subordinate AP detects it, boots up as a master AP, and uses the same controller config as the previous master AP. But it's not sub-second. So what ends up happening is that, okay, the master AP goes down. VRP detects it. This other AP then decides, okay, I'm going to become the master AP. Now I start booting up the controller operating system, which takes a little bit of time. The controller operating system finishes its boot, at which point APs can join up to it. So those APs, when the master AP went down, every AP lost connection to that controller. They're all in standalone mode, which these are actually all Flex Connect mode APs. They're in standalone mode. They're looking for a controller to join up to. Eventually, the, a new master AP rises. It's using the same IPs and same config as before. So they already know the IP address that they need to find. They just join back up to the same IP address. It just happens to be on a different controller, a different AP now. And then, boom, they're up and running again. Uh, but it's the same config thanks to the syncing process that happens from the master AP to any Mobility Express capable subordinate APs. So, some key points to remember about Mobility Express, and then all of the configs really start to make sense when you remember these important things. The master AP is both a controller and an AP on the same device. I've said this many times, but it's two separate entities. All APs joining the master AP will be placed in Flex Connect mode automatically. So, joined up to a, flex, um, a master AP, boom, you're a Flex Connect mode AP, no matter what. All APs joining a master AP will be placed into the default Flex Connect group, and that is the only allowed Flex Connect group. So, as we configure things, we configure them as Flex Connect mode APs in the default Flex Connect group. Next, all WLANs configured on the master AP use Flex Connect local switching. There is no central switching. And so, as we configure our WLANs, you just know, oh, well, all these WLANs are going to be used on Flex Connect mode APs, and it's going to be locally switched in the default Flex Connect group. And when you know that, you do the configs the right way. It all makes sense to you because, okay, you would think, how would I configure this on a 5500 if I knew that it was Flex Connect mode APs with local switching in the default Flex Connect group? Okay, I would do it this way. That's how you configure it on Mobility Express. Um, with Mobility Express, there is no RRM or mobility coordination outside of the Mobility Express deployment. So I can't create a mobility group between a master AP and a 5508. I can't create an RF group between the master AP and a 5508 or, or between two separate Mobility Express deployments either. There's no tunneling. There's no large-scale RRM, multi-controller RRM, or anything like that. Everything's just confined within the Mobility Express deployment. And so again, if you remember all these things, just think about, okay, how would I do this if it was this way on a 5508 controller? That's exactly how you would configure it in Mobility Express. And when you think about features, you know, what's not supported in Mobility Express, I mean, there's definitely a list. But you can immediately start with the list of, okay, if it's not supported, with Flex Connect local switching, um, then it's not supported in Mobility Express. That's, that's an easy starting point right there. But then there's more stuff on top of that too. And so I highly encourage you to look at this document. It's the Mobility Express Flex Connect Feature Matrix. It is with 8.5 code, but it's the best list that we have available to us. And it's gonna run down the list of most everything. It'll say, yes, it's supported. No, it's not supported. Or it's supported in connected mode, but it's not supported in standalone mode. And so just because it's supported in Flex Connect local switching on a 5508 doesn't mean it's necessarily supported in Mobility Express. For instance, we cannot support local auth in Mobility Express, which means 802.1xwlands cannot work in standalone mode. It's just the way it is. Um, 
So there, there are some differences. So like I said, that, that list would be a good one to peruse in case that we get some of these feature uh, questions with Mobility Express. But let's take a look at a few things. One, putting APs into Mobility Express mode. We'll watch the boot process, the master AP setup, and we'll just peruse the interfaces and we'll call it good.